Welcome back friends to the shop. We've got a fun project today. We're going to be installing a set of LED armored backup lights that are going to be tied into the reverse lights on the adventure van. I'll show you how to do this in a way where you don't have to have any switches. Let's just kind of forget about it. You can install them whenever you throw it in reverse, they'll automatically come on with your lights using a relay. So let's take a look at the tools and the stuff and then we'll jump in and get started on the project. I went ahead and installed one side so you could see what we have going on here. These are a flush mount, so they fit here nice on the aluminous fender. You could put these into, um, um, recess these into pretty much anything, including a, a bumper. So they're just a very nice, clean look. It's going to be really tough um, away from anything that might damage them. And here's the unmounted light. You can see these are the same lights as we put up on the rack, except for these are diffused meaning the lens in here is going to have throw a kind of a more of a flood uh, than a spot. It's a different, it's got a different uh, lens on there and also the flange uh, that allows you to flush mount. I, I really like the armored lights because they're, well, one, they're a good local Oregon company and they're just such a good value. They're very high quality um, and they're a lot less money than some of the really expensive ones like the rigids. And I just can't see enough difference to justify the cost. Comes with really good stainless steel, uh, hardware, take note, roto packs, no more cat, no cadmium here. Uh, I like the Allens, they look much nicer than the, than the hex head. Um, and a great gasket, not one of those silly foam ones, but a good rubber one, a sticky one, so that, that won't mar your surface. Nice automotive plugs. And then the thing what I really like are the harnesses. It comes pre-installed with the switch and everything. We're gonna be chopping this all up because we don't want this switched. Um, but I do appreciate the nice, high quality sealed automotive plugs. And that way, if you have a problem, you can just unsnap it, take it out. And Armored's really good about their warranty. You can just give, give those guys a call up in Bend, Oregon, and they'll, they'll take care of you. I've been really impressed with them. And again, you guys know I'm always harping on you about this. Have all your stuff. Think about your job. Think about what you're doing and everything that you're going to need and have it laid out ahead of time. Look at your screws, get your Allens, your fasteners, your Loctite, whatever it is you need, test lights, drills, bits, all that figured out so that you can be aggravation free when you start your job. Fortunately, we already have uh, the holes here, so that's gonna make it a lot easier. Uh, if you don't have the holes, you can just use the gasket that comes with the light um, as, a as a template. Uh, but remember, you have the thing clean, do nice work, remember? Cleanliness is next to godliness. What I found on the first light was that they, uh, the lights do not fit into the holes uh, per se because of this uh, bump out for the wire. Um, so that's not a problem. So what we'll, we'll do here is we'll just take these uh, six little Allen heads out and then we'll separate the, uh, that faceplate from the light and then we'll put the light in from the back and then we'll reinstall these and uh, kind of sandwich them into the bumper. There we can take that cover off and uh, Go from in, coming from the back side. Just as a side note, these lenses are replaceable. They're, they're a plastic, so you could probably, I haven't had to change one, but you can see you can access that deflector in there. But they've got a nice gasket on there, so. I've never had one leak. I've had mine for almost full season now, and uh, or a full 12 months, and um, not an issue with them. Boy, is it windy and cold today. I can't believe it's like this in July. So uh, before we start, I'm just gonna put this the smallest drop of Loctite on all these. I Loctite in everything anymore. It's just a peace of mind. I've never had a bolt come loose. It's Loctite, especially when I'm working with aluminum because it's so delicate. And that way you don't have to over tighten it. You don't run the risk of stripping it. Now we can come in from the, from the back side. We've got plenty of clearance on there. Now don't forget to put your gasket on. Make sure it's clean, you don't get any lumps or goobers in there. Look at that. This is why you lock tight ahead of time so you don't, you won't be able to if you're trying to hold these lights in. And watch that you don't get that gasket pinched in between the two. You get, the, you just snug up those two corners and then that will pull it in there and you don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> Speaking of shade tree, I was, I used to have, uh, actually I've had a couple Ford Broncos. My first one was, it was my second car, was a 1977, you know, the, the original ones. I, that was one of my favorite vehicles. Um, and then later in life, I got a, a full size, a big body one. That must've been like a mid eighties or so. And uh, I, I was coming back from Utah and in Idaho in the middle of nowhere, 
um, the clutch exploded. It was a manual pulled over on the side of the road, hitchhiked, got a ride to an auto parts store. Luckily they had a, a clutch and a pressure plate and I bought that thing and came back there and with a bottle jack and a lot of aggravation, <laughs> I replaced that clutch on the side of the road, <laughs> on the side of the highway in the middle of nowhere and uh, continued on and got home to Oregon. Like man, the things that I, the things I had to do back in the day, you know, you'd have to do those things when you, when you're, when you don't have any, <laughs> any money and you, no, no one to help you. All right, that looks, that looks really nice. That's a good clean look there. Now we're ready to drill the holes for our cap screws. So I'll uh, just push that in there and, and I'll go left to right and then just find the center and then uh, make sure, oh, this is one of the best tools you can have in your shop. It's a spring loaded uh, center punch and it, it's, it's all in one so you don't have to have a hammer. So I'm going to drill my first hole here, so find center and press that. There's a spring in there and then that will uh, give you a place for your drill, drill bit to start so it won't wander. So I'm going to start with a small eighth inch bit. I always drill eighth inch holes with my, for my pilot holes. And don't drill them all. Drill the first one and then this is the full size one. Blow out any chips that are in there. Now go ahead and install it. I'm not going to use Loctite on these because we have um, Nylock or the aviation grade nuts on there. Uh, if you're installing armored lights, this is a 10 millimeter. This is, uh, the hardware is metric. With the two cap screws in, we can go ahead and snug these two up and that will hold it in place and it won't move. Now remember, if you're using stainless steel hardware, be careful not, if you're using impact tools, not to gall the threads. If you create heat on them, run them in too fast, they'll gall and it's really a terrible nightmare to get them off. Now that those are tightened up in the corners, we don't need to center punch. The, 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 the casing here is gonna make sure that the drill bit goes in the right spot. I'll tell you guys, uh, I'll tell you, my granddad was, as you guys know, was a mechanic. I'll tell you one of his good story he told me. So up on the Snake River in Hell's Canyon, that's uh, up in the corner of the, the corner between Oregon, Washington and Idaho. It's actually the Hell's Canyon up there. So we used to go elk hunting is deeper than the Grand Canyon. Most people don't know that. Anyway, they offer, uh, there's a, uh, there used to be, I don't know if there still is, uh, a mail boat, there's a jet boat. Out here, and the we, jet boats are really popular. They're boats that are, have flat bottoms, typically aluminum, sometimes semi-V. Um, and instead of having a propeller, they, they, have, uh, they blow water out the back. There's an intake on the bottom. That way, uh, they're really popular with fishermen. I actually had one when I was in high school because uh, you can run in three or four inches of water. So I should drill that first. So this mail boat, uh, it's the only way to access, or it was, uh, homesteads up in the, up in the that, that part of the country. And so this, this boat, I think, would run up once a week and it would bring supplies and mail and different things up there to an outpost. Um, and to, to pay for it, they would, uh, you, could ch you could charter rides with it. And uh, so it was popular with people. You'd go up there and it's pretty exciting if you've never been in a jet boat before. And uh, my granddad was, uh, him and my grandma were up on that, uh, taking that ride. And uh, that boat, it's a big boat, it's a powerful boat. It had uh, two, uh, Ford big block 460s um, that powered um, three state, two three-stage Hamilton jets, big heavy-duty um, jet pumps. And uh, one of the engines died uh, halfway through the trip. A starter, that's what it was, a starter went out on one of those 460s and the guy was, uh, was in trouble because he needed all of the power uh, to finish the trip. He needed both those engines. And so uh, what they end up having to do uh, to make it, to get, a, get back safely, 
was uh, they had to, uh, Granddad helped him, and they had to crawl underneath the bilge of the engine that was running. Uh, left it running, unbolt the starter for the good engine very carefully. I mean, that, that's a precarious, <laughs> a precarious thing to do. Did I tighten all these already? Uh, unbolt the starter and uh, take it off and then um, bolt it up to the engine with the bad starter and then start it up and leave the engines going. And that's how they do it. And if you know, if you've ever worked on boats, uh, they're pretty tight and a, a hot running engine, you know, and trying to get that starter out there without dinging it up on the flywheel uh, was probably not a very <laughs> a fun job. But I always remembered that. I thought that was such a clever, a clever idea. Yeah, that... You see that gasket was pinching out a little bit. I think I maybe over tightened it. You know, I can feel that stainless steel is galling. Oh man, I think I lost it. I think it did. I, I should have put anti-seize on there. I knew better. I was thinking, yeah, it is, it's galled. Now, now I got a problem. It just will just weld itself on there. Most likely it's gonna break before I get it off, but we'll see. Good grief, look at that. I'm always warning you guys about that and I did it myself. It absolutely is, it just welds its stuff itself on there. That stainless steel, I don't know what it's about it. So just a little paste of the uh, of anti-seize, whether it's the aluminum or the copper, uh, will make, it won't do that. I should have, I'm just gonna make a policy of that. Whenever I'm working with stainless, just to, it's just automatically done. Usually if we can keep that, made it up there, put it in the vise and put a little pressure on it, we can kind of get that to catch. But go back and forth, go in a little bit with pressure, back it out. We'll give it one more shot here. If it doesn't work, we'll call Armored, see if they can send me some, if I can order some more, another set of hardware. Yeah, there we go. We're cooking, we're, we're in good shape. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today's video. We'll do the wiring, the full install on tomorrow's video. I'll link these together. So also tomorrow we'll be announcing the giveaway uh, for the SOG uh, throwing tomahawks. Um, if you haven't entered, you can go over to the tomahawk video and just comment. Just comment on there um, and that will put you in the running for the randomizer. And I'm going to announce this on our Instagram page tomorrow. So if you want to uh, see, you've got, you've got to claim it. You've got to claim it within 24 hours. Uh, so go over to my Instagram page at Mr. Wrangler Star. I'll put a link in the subject heading um, and I'll do just a short video announcing the winner uh, of these. So go enter. You still have time. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the, uh, on the next video.